Where, where the fuck does it come from? Proud of their contribution to. As I said, we would be making the Slovenia, um, you know, Geography Now Slovenia episode into two parts because it's a 25 minute long episode, which is quite, you know, long compared to the older episodes of Geography Now. Um, so we're going to continue from the 11th minute from this video again uh, and see what they, uh, what else they can teach us about Slovenia. So far, there's quite a lot of things that surprise me, which is, you know, weird since I come there so often that I just didn't know these things. And now I'm kind of, you know, embarrassed that I didn't know it and, and uh, feeling stupid for not visiting more cool places um, that I have seen in this video, but I will note them on my travel list and I will, I will check them off and I will take you guys with me, of course. That got dark fast, okay. <laughs> Gary Harlow after hours. Thank you, Gary. All right, and with that, it's time to finish off the segment as we always do. <laughs> now guys, Slovenia has a lot to offer culinary-wise as they kind of fuse everything from South, Central, and Balkan Europe. Some dishes may include things like meatloaf with hard-boiled... What the fuck? <laughs> with a hard-boiled egg in it? I never know this. Egg, scrambled egg soup and... Scrambled egg soup. Yoda. I know, it sounds like... <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> but it's not. Yota. It's Yota. Puccia, repa, carniol in sausage, custard cake. Oh yeah, that cake is... Oh my, the cake? Oh, that cake is really good. Oh, and this one is good too. Weird strudel cake and potizza. And this is also very good. One of my friends works in a... What is it called? A pastry? No, works in a pastry. Works in a bakery making pastries. And he made this for me when I was in Slovenia and he makes such good things and cakes and stuff. And this was so good. So, so good. I love that. A lot of potica. For drinks, they also boast beer. thousands of microbreweries, uh, especially in Kamni. They even have a beer fountain in Jalik. Beer fountain, guys. Yeah. Do you hear beer me? Fountain. Nonetheless, the national drink is schnapps. Many people even make their own at home, probably in a tub. Who knows? And speaking of a home life, that brings us to the people of Slovenia, which we will discuss in... Thank you, Ivan. Now, in the words of geography peep Irina, Slovenia is a Slavic country with its head in Austria and feet in Italy. Years of being subjugated and its butt in the Balkans. <laughs> Under the Romans, Austro-Hungarians, and the Yugoslavs has shaped and molded this interesting anomaly of a nation that kind of bridges the Slavic, Germanic, and Latin cultures all in one. And it's funny because like they're not the only one of these culturally divergent oddity countries. Like they're they're all over Europe. Most Latins are Catholic, but I'm kind of feeling this Orthodox thing. And I swear I'm Nordic. <laughs> so yeah, Slovenia is not alone. Anyway, here's oh. the graph. Population wise, Slovenia has a little over 2 million people and they have the highest GDP nominal and purchasing power parity in the entire Balkan region. The country is predominantly ethnically Slovene at about 83%. And from there, the rest are from a slew of other countries, none super prevalent, but the largest one being Serbs and Croats at about 2% each. And the rest of the population come from mostly other parts of Europe like Bosnia and Herzegovina. There's Romani people and Hungarian Hungarians, and so on. They use the euro yep. as their currency, they use the types C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, Slovenia's national language is, no shocker, Slovene. It's a... Whoa, whoa. Did he just say Slo whoa. Slavic language related to their Balkan cousins like Serbian or Croatian, but it's like way less intelligible and has a lot of weird German twists. In fact, Slovene grammar is way more confusing because not only do they have the singular and plural tenses, but they also have a dual tense to describe pairs of nouns. Here's Jagapip Kaya explaining. Well, the formal Slovenian language is a unique language because it's truly romantic. It uses the dual- It's not romantic. Kaya, please. I'm sorry, you're doing your best. It's not a romantic. It. I find it like if you would take Bosnia and Serbian or Croatian, and you would just rape it, you would get Slovene. It's like they just leave out some kind of letters and stuff. Like in Bosnia, Serbian, Croatia, you would say "škola," for example, going to school, and in Slo in Slovene, you would say "šola," leave out the K. It's just kind of a a gay version of the language, and I'm offending a lot of Slovenes watching this, but. Um, that's just because I'm buzzing and it sounds, it sounds to me like that. And then there's many other words which they just complete where I'm just like, what? 
And the most funny word or the word that I r really love the most in Slovene or saying it's like when when, when you, a kid goes to pee or like you say it in a childish way, peeing, you would say lulati. <laughs> I just fucking love that word. Oh, grim lulati. I, you know, in Bosnia you would say idem or I go, as in I go, or in Serbian creation as well, idem. And in... Um, Idem pišat, and then in Slovene, grim lulati, grim, idem, grim, lidem. You get the point. They're very similar, but it's far from romantic. So, Kaya, you tried your best. You're proud. Slovene, probably, but um, I gotta roast you a little bit on this one. Got, got to. Dual grammatical number in addition to the singular and the plural. For example, in English language, you would say dog to one dog, and dogs to two dogs or more. And now in Slovene. Pus means one dog, sa means two dogs, and psi means three or more dogs. I will also give an example of verb dilati, which means working, conjugation. Dila means I am work Dila, da. working. Dila va means we are working. We are working. Whoa, whoa, I've learned this, but I never noticed it, For ex you know, because I just pick it up in sentences. I never actually stood and realized this. And dila mo means we are working, and so on. It is used for verbs as well as nouns, pronouns, adjectives, except in some dialects. Sometimes it is very confusing even for us Slovenes. I can't imagine how hard it must be for someone who tries to learn it. Thank you, Kaya. Nonetheless, as a small country with a rare language, the vast majority of people in Slovenia are either bilingual or trilingual with English and German as common second and third languages. The country, in fact, ranked at one time having the fourth best education system in Europe and 12th in the world. Faith-wise, like their Croatian neighbors Slovenia is a Catholic influenced nation somewhere around 70% of the country claims to be at least some way affiliated with the church so yeah as you can see Slovenia is quite a cultural anomaly nature loving Germanified Catholic -y Slavs and with so much of the great outdoors surrounding them they've always been kind of keen on going outside and staying active skiing is probably their favorite pastime <laughs> go guys so I stay active <laughs> <laughs> he just told that like totally from South Park. I love it. I love it. Learn how to ski in primary school. No athlete is more renowned though than gold medalist Tina Matze, who won the women's downhill and giant slalom events in the Sochi Olympics in 2014. Whoa, never heard of her. <laughs> Basketball and handball are popular too. Yeah. They won the Eurobasket gold medal in 2017. And yep. third place in the World Handball Championships in the very same year. Oh shoot, I'm talking about sports. <laughs> and the women's volleyball team is also very good. <laughs> Sorry, Art, I took a little bit of your segment. Anyway, here's Art finishing off the sports part with Art. Wait, Slovenia and Slovakia are two different places? Oh my gosh, Art. <laughs> <laughs> Bicycling. Not funny. D don't compare Slovakia to Slovenia. It has also a long standing tradition in Slovenia as they have countless paths and roads that are perfect for training. They've actually won two Grand Tours. This guy, who was the first Slovene to win a Grand Tour in 2019. And this guy, who won the Tour in D France in 2000. <laughs> in D France? God, it's a Tour de tour, France. Tour, tour de, de France. France at 20. Tour de France. 20. I can't even believe it was going on with this whole pandemic and all that. Yeah, I guess, yeah, they had one, I guess. Well, congrats to you, Taj Polkadar. <laughs> Polkadar, oh my God. In the end though, one sport that is definitely in their element would be mountaineering. That's not a sport, but whatever. Slovenia is considered a mountaineering powerhouse and anything that has to do with climbing, tackling a mountain, you can bet a Slovene like these guys would not be far from the elite pack. And speaking of climbing, I need to climb my way out of here. So I'm gonna, I'm like, that's going down, climbing is up. There's. <laughs> Torchin. Thank you, Art. You so crazy. Slovenians, they've always kind of been like a country that tries to like highlight every little claim they can. They'll even tell you they invented the wheel because the oldest known wheel ever found was in a swamp near the capital. And speaking of claims, Slovenia has a lot of vibrant, colorful tradition. And with that, here's Random Hannah's turn to take a swing at the batter's box. <laughs> Guys, it is so good to be back. I have nothing to whine about, and neither do you now, because we have a random Hannah shirt. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And you can get it at geographynow.com. So Slovenia. She screamed a bit too hard in that microphone. Underneath those industrious mountain folk is a people riddled in vivacious backstory. It is said that in order to be a true Slovene, you must climb the highest peak, Trigla, followed by a custom of, well, goes like this. Wow, we made it to the top of Mount Triglav. This is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Come here. 
That's the tradition. Many people may live. What? I didn't. What the fuck? I don't know this live with their extended family. And Sunday family lunches are very common. When a child is born, there is usually a three day long party that includes a lot of wine drinking and soaking the father in wine because it is supposed to stop the baby from having flat feet. Wait, what? I was like, flat feet? So these are... I... I have so many, so much people, so much family living in Slovenia, so many Slovenian friends. They've, they probably did hear about, hear about it, but they never told me about it and I've never witnessed it. So where, where the fuck does it come from? <laughs> proud of their contribution to modern inventions, such as dialysis machines, Hewlett Packard calculators, the photograph, slide frame, the foldable wooden rec chair, and spherical liquid crystal lasers. I had a problem saying everything except for spherical liquid crystal lasers. The national costume known as the Narodna Nosha might be worn at special events. You might notice the slight Germanic undertones for the male costumes with leather knee-high boots, and then you see a Croatian a, a coat of arms hanging behind them. What the fuck, guys? What the fuck? Over breeches, felt hats, and finally, a scarf under the vest. For women, you have the more Slavic looking blouses and petticoats. The most notable part of the costume being the headdress or abva, often with an embroidered headband followed by a poofy white starched bow on the back. The bigger poofier abvas are usually reserved for married women. Literature has always persisted in Slovene culture, with their most famed poet Francis Pescherin and these authors and playwrights who pioneered movements like Slovene modernism, avant-gardeism, and expressionalism. Metropolitan architecture in Slovenia has a unique twist that- Yeah, the architecture is really, really cool. That's something I really like about Slovenia, but all the, you know, the authors and stuff, I don't know that stuff. Mixes everything from Vienna secessionist cream-colored neo-baroque exteriors, exteriors to royalist Yugoslav and functionalist Yugoslav complexes. Paul! Someone write a letter to Paul and tell him to write his sentences better. I'm the king of run-on sentences. I don't even know what I just said. Speaking of construction, Slovenia is one of the few places you can see Klopotek. Tell me if I pronounced that right, guys. Don't let the image fool you. This is not a windmill, but more of a scarecrow that keeps birds away from vineyards with spinning and rattling sounds. Of course, Slovenes love celebration. They have the Lint Festival, the Novi Rock Festival, the Slovene Book Fair. They even have one of Europe's most... Dude, I'm getting so much new info for a country that I visit so much, my mind is blown. Noun Carnival Festivals, lasting 11 days in the town of Petui, and is inscribed in the UNESCO Heritage List. They celebrate Pusht, which is like a Halloween in February, where the character is sentenced to death for causing all the world's problems. That's dramatic. And speaking of all the world's problems, here is Keith with the music segment. Buy yeah. my shirt, my Keith shirt. You here all here to get educated. Keith fought the bath up and won. What the fuck? It again. Music of Slovenia. For one, they have one of the world's oldest known instruments, the Neanderthal flute. Made by Barebone, discovered in 1995, thought to be about 50,000 years old. Today, they moved on to more refined elements. Traditionally, Slovenian music has been heavily influenced by the Germans, Swiss, and Austrians. They are one of the few Slavic peoples that really love to play the accordion, specifically the Styrian, the old- What? Isn't that just from the Balkans, from all the Bosnian, Serbian, and Croatian people's influence? I'm not really sure about this, but, you know, if they say so, I, I can't confirm it because I, I just don't know enough about Slovenia and the influence from surrounding countries, but you know, it's a really popular instrument in the Balkan countries too, and since it was such a long time part of Yugoslavia, I would think that it's, it's influenced by that, but... Oldest kind in the world according to Austria, which, you know, those Austrians, if they're anything like the Germans, they're, you know, smart. All right. <laughs> <Good save. laughs> they even have their own styles of polka and waltz. During Italian influence years, many Slovene Renaissance composers like these dudes came into the spotlight. During the Austro-Hungarian Empire years, things got way more Germanified. During the Romantic period, composers like these rose to the top. Uh, nonetheless, they still respect their traditional Slovenian roots and have their own Slovene 
folk styles. Slavko Avsenik, being probably the most famous musician of Slovenian folk music, he is known for inventing the Oberkrainer country sound that became popular in Slovenia, Germany, Austria. Today, Slovenians indulge in every genre imaginable, just like every country at this point on the face of the earth. There was a huge industrial rock movement in the 1980s and the 90s with Leibach and the acapella band Perpetuum Jazil. The best band though that came at least be partially claimed by Slovenia. Yeah, these these guys are the best. Let the cellos, which I believe is Paul's favorite band. Two cellos are really, really, really good. Yeah, Luca, love you, man. You're from Slovenia. I had to put this in the episode. Two cellos. I love that band. He loves them. Anyway, I'm Keith. I'm awesome. Buy a Keith shirt. You know, you get to look like this sexy dude. Anyways. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Keith. And with that, let's just do a very quick rundown on the history of Slovenia. In the quickest way I can summarize it, in the late 6th and 7th century, they had their first kingdom. Then Charlemagne kind of took over. Then for like 1400 years, they were part of different German-speaking kingdoms. World War I. They had a short-lived state called the State of Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs. Then the Kingdom of Serbs and Croats and Slovenes. World War II, Yugoslavia, 1991. Independence joins the EU and NATO. Joins the European Monetary Union. And those are like the biggest things. I asked you guys the Slovene geography peeps to give me a list of all the famous Slovene people you could think of. Here are some of the people you meant. Slavoj Žižek. I have some videos on him as well. There are just so many of them. I'm just going to put the list on with a montage. Katarina Čos. Yeah, that's a... You want to look that one up, boys. Feel free to screenshot this if you want and look these people up. Tarchin, do you want to be a famous Slovene? Do you? Look at me explain. Foolish mortal. <laughs> the fuck? Animals. Ha! Definitely not below me. And speaking of, uh... I don't know, there's no way to really transition from a dog to friend zone. But anyway, here's friend zone. Man's best friend. Oh, how could I miss that? Dog. Man's best friend. Oh. Anyway, as we mentioned many times, Slovenia is kind of like the bridge between the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic peoples. So you'll see those countries generally kind of tie into the mix when it comes to their friends. For yeah. one, with Italy, it's kind of like a love little bit of hate relationship. Historically, they're a part of many Italian-based kingdoms and empires and rulers, like the Romans, Byzantines, and the Republic of Venice. And today, they still kind of look at the map and say, really, Trieste, come on, Italy. Nonetheless, there are many Italian and Slovene minorities in each other's countries countries and they have amicable relations. When it comes True. to their Balkan neighbors, Slovenia is basically the uncle that begrudgingly shows up to the South Slavic family reunion only because they are family. And no matter how different you are, you never disavow your family. Out of all the South Slavs, Serbians are the largest minority in Slovenia at about two to three percent of the population and many have family within each other's countries. There was a little drama when they recognized Kosovo and the rest of the NATO allies back in the day, which created a small sour taste in Serbia's mouth, but nonetheless they remain close. Croatia has always been a close friend and Slovenes almost always take a mass migration to their coast for a vacation annually. Of course there's always a little bit of drama with Croatia as well considering the unfinished border disputes and some Slovenians will bring up the historical claims of land that are now in Croatia that they claim were part of Slovenia in the past but these issues are not detrimental to the overall to the overall public all bilateral no. diplomacy between these two countries as an issue or just the public in general like people don't really give a shit about that and that's always kind of been at the crossroads between the three main parts of europe joining the latin world with the germanic and slavic it's no shocker that slovenia also kind of acts like the nice neutral mediator for larger states whenever the eu wants to get involved in anything non-eu europe country related slovenia is usually a good nomination for summit meetings and not even just between the eu back in 2008 they even hosted a meeting between former u.s president Bush and Vladimir Putin. When it comes to their best friend, however, when it comes to their best friends, however, almost every Slovene I have talked to has in some way, shape, or form mentioned the same country, Austria. It is often said that Slovenes are like Slavic Austrians. They True, all the Slo Slovene people that I know have friends from Austria or have, or have studied in Austria and that kind of stuff. So yeah, they're really related. The Austrian lifestyle, the influence is clearly evident in their social structure. Everything from the accordion playing to the alpine mountaineering culture, Slovenes are totally crushing on Austrians. Austria acknowledges them and enjoys their company, but usually pays more attention to Switzerland and Germany, which in return only makes Slovenia crazier for their crush, and they do everything from learning German to dancing the waltz just to get their attention. It's cute. In conclusion. <laughs> just to get their attention. Notice me. <laughs> Just like Triglav with its triple peaks, Slovenia is kind of like a triple bridge nation that connects the Germanic, Latin, and Slavic worlds. Which is why, no shocker, so many people must be in Slov with Slovenia.
Nobody's here to punch me. Okay, That's the second part of geography now, Slovenia. There's a lot of things that I didn't even know about Slovenia. For someone who comes there very often, I kind of feel embarrassed for not knowing so much of these things. And also the fact that uh, the reference between Austria and other countries were made more than with the Balkans, but I think it's way more even than, than they try to picture here. But just could be my personal experience since uh, many of the Slovenes that I know have somewhat of... Um, Serbian or Croatian or Bosnian family members or are married or have a girlfriend and that kind of stuff so maybe it's just in my head from my personal environment but I would say it's more even because of that maybe it isn't I don't know how how they found out that information and on what it is based but um, nevertheless it is always related as well to Austria Germany and the Balkans so and what percentages that could be you know discussable or it could be disputable or however you want to call it yeah I hope you guys like this video I I did enjoy this it is the last one from the Balkans so no more geography now on the channel but um, it was really fun to make this series and this reaction video series to Barbie's content well not only Barbie's content his entire crew um, and and to learn sometimes new things of the countries where I where I've grown up and visited that so many times so it's really you know an eye opener sometimes i corrected him sometimes i disagree with him um but that, that's a part of this series so hope you guys liked it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already like the video if you did like it and i see you guys in the next video ciao perfect